Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. We pray that today's message impacts your life. Let's get ready for this service. I want to thank you, pastors, so very much for allowing me the opportunity to minister tonight. And most of all, for allowing us to be part of this church. You know, the first time I came here, they said, when you come once, Hallelujah. I want to thank you so much for leaving out Christ. You see, the church is one body that exists for the benefit of non-members. When I see the things that you're doing, when I, uh, the last time we were here, there was uh, the expunging of people's you know, records and, and things like that. Not necessarily members of this church, but the church being there for the community and for the rest of the world. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm Bernard Joshua Kirabira. My wife, Annette, is right here. We serve in Uganda. Um, my wife works with uh, anti-human trafficking and uh, ladies that um, into sexual exploitation, those that are being exploited sexually and getting those back into a normal life. Amen? Uh, I serve in so many capacities, and today I want us to look at uh, the island school, a school that this church is building or helping to build in Uganda. Shall we have some of those slides, please? Okay, somewhere along the way, that track of ours was knocked by this seemingly small car. But the effect was serious. So many things were damaged and this church helped us get that truck back to what it looks like over there. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for believing in your pastors and believing in the work that they're doing uh, all over the world. L let's move on to, yeah, so with that truck, we do so many things. That is, uh, up there we have a national leaders seminar. We bring together leaders, pastors from all over the country. And, and, and here we have an open air crusade. Uh, I believe that the team that is coming in August, we will have an opportunity to do some of that with them. And there we were facilitating our pastors with transportation in the form of motorcycles, which they use both for ministry and for income. Uh, for those of you that have been to Uganda, you know that you can jump on that motorcycle and they take you for one mile and you pay half a dollar or something like that. So the pastors, you know, try to increase on their income by, and so that truck helps us in all this kind of work that we do. And again, thank you so much for, by fixing the truck, you enable us to do all that. Amen? In 2007, God told us to start a school in a very remote part of Uganda called Buvuma Islands. We had never been there. It was, you know. So in 2008, we began. Uh, one of our reasoning for us to start the way we started, we said we don't want another child to outgrow school going age. We would rather start without the infrastructure. So we started that way, and now we've been moving on. Let's move to the next, please. That was renovated by you people here. So this is the before. By the time the team here visited Uganda, the building looked like that and it was threatening to everyone that was in it. And then you as a church have fixed the building to be that right now, renovated that. So, um, 
you sponsored the draining, uh, the, the area used to flood, and so this draining was sponsored by this church, and that's why you can see right in the middle there, we have some t-shirts that look <laughs> like you've seen them somewhere. And so we did that work, um, you know, by draining that water, they call it greeting, and you dig and lower the water table and then drain the water into the lake. So now when it rains, it does not flood forever. The water keeps going into the lake and so that the, the general ground is dry. Uh, let's move to the next one, please. So that is the team that came to Uganda, part of the team that came to Uganda. Uh, over there, we had just gotten to the island school and then over there with the children at our church, the children's church. And here you bought shoes and you were giving out the shoes to the children at the island school. <laughs> Let's move to the next one. Now that is a building that um, the ent entirely built by this church. The other one over there. We were attacked by rain and all we, ha we had left were three classrooms for instead of 10 or 11. We had only three. And so this church has built another three over there. Everything to finish that building is almost there other than just a few things. These are candidates. And as you realize, one of them was using a wheelchair, and so we have a few things to do on that building. But these are candidates. Now, those are children that are leaving elementary school, going to a middle school. 2019 candidates. Let's move to... Okay, we also contribute towards uh, the, the school. We grow all the food. And so uh, that is maize or corn that we grow, and then we mill it, and then it's used for food. And then those, that's a team from church. We go to the school to pray and then to inspect and make sure that things are going the way they should. And finally, these are some of the needs at the school. Because, um, you know, each time we've been working in a crisis kind of mode, uh, the desks that we've been doing, making, have been, you know, out of the cheapest timber and about every two years or something you run out of desks. And so, um, you know, those are some of the need. needs for desks, needs for another four classroom block because now we have six classrooms built, but then we have 10 classes. So some of the children are in that kind of environment. Thank you. Thank you so much for the support. And in August, when you send a team, um, we will be going to the island school and we'll be seeing things as they will be by August. Amen? So today I want us to uh, look at cultivated soil. Um, cultivated soil. L let's get the first slide over there. The slide with the family, please. The previous one to that. Okay. Annette and I, on the 25th of March, will be making 25 years in marriage. And God has blessed us with uh, uh, three biological sons. Philip is uh, a third year student, mechanical engineering in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, Benjamin is a second year law student in a university in Mauritius in Africa. And the last one here is finishing middle school, going to high school, he's called Jonathan. So we have 22, 19, and 15. Amen? Cultivated soil. Whenever you're going to do agriculture, and I come from an agricultural country, you prepare the soils. 
And in the book of Luke chapter eight, beginning at verse 14, I mean verse four to verse 13, we find what we normally call the parable of the sower. But today I want to look at it differently. I want to look at it as the parable of the soils. Because the sower is the same, he's one, but then the soils are four. So when you look at the soil, because all the seeds that were planted in the different types of soil had the capacity to bear fruit. Seed has the capacity to bear fruit. So the problem is not the seed. Every church has the capacity to grow like this one has grown. So the problem is not the seed. Your neighbor has the capacity to grow to full capacity. The problem is not the seed. And so Jesus goes on to say, oh, the Bible says one day, um, I'm, I'm reading from verse four. One day Jesus told a story to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns and to hear him. A farmer went out to plant his seed and he scattered, as he scattered it across his field, some fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. I want to, to concentrate on this seed that fell on the path, on the way, on that ground that people were walking on and it was trampled. God has planted seeds in our lives and even in your life God has planted some seed. But at times the reason why the seed does not grow is because we are trampled or we were trampled. Someone walked on us. Someone is walking on us. Someone abused us. And because of what was done to us by people, we do not bear the expected results. And today I want us to focus on us in two ways. Number one, I want us to begin to cultivate our lives for the ministry, for the calling, for the things that God wants to do in our lives. Many times I've met people here in the United States and I've invited them to come to Uganda. And they tell me that their income cannot allow them to come to Uganda. When is the last time you compared the income in the United States to the income in Uganda? I have a doctor friend that moved here in 95. And the first job he did was to mop floors. And I was talking to him on the phone and he told me, I'm surprised I make more by mopping floors than I was making in a surgical ward. Now he's practicing medicine after many years. But then at times the reasons that we give are out of the fact that we have not cultivated the soil. In our lives, people have abused us. In our lives, people have belittled us. In our lives, people are still abusing us. This soil was normal soil until people began to make a path and walk on it. There are many times when we feel we are not able, we are not going to be used by God because of what people have done to us. And friends, we can go beyond that. We can go back to our hearts and cultivate ourselves and change the results. 
Again, the problem is not the seed. Every soil has the capacity to grow seed and then have a great harvest. My wife was asking me, have you considered the rock soil, the rocky soil? I remember in so many years ago, the Israelites came to Uganda to build an airport. And they airlifted the soil. Whenever they graded, they airlifted the soil and went and made a difference in Israel. Hello? Every soil, I don't want to go into the rocky soil because that one suffered erosion and then the rocks were exposed and so we can get back to that. But I want us to concentrate on the soil that has been mishandled by people. Stop complaining about your parents, it's too late. (laughs) Remember you are the firstborn, so you're the specimen, they were learning. I'm sorry it took so long for them to learn. And they are human. And every human being has error. Stop complaining about being the last born. Your parents had only two children. And you're not the first. Oh, you know, I've got the last born syndrome. I've got the first born syndrome. All right, can you go back and cultivate the soil? By the way, where you came to Jesus is the first born, you're not. And the last bones are still coming in even up to today, so you're not the last born either. Cultivate the soil. Let us get rid of what people have done to us. Get over them because God has the power to help us. God has great use for you. Can you imagine this church helping children in a place where you fly 23 hours, land after 23 hours and before you even have a nap, you have a lot of work to do, and and then wake up, ask the team that came to Uganda, wake up at four and be on the road. Get out of the vehicle and go on a ferry. Get off of the ferry and go in another vehicle and go to help children. Hello? Jesus has a lot to do with us. Let us remove everything. And I want to ask you today, What is it in your past that is still an issue? What have people done to you? By the way, people are people. And they are going to be people. Some of them don't even know they hurt you. Hello? Like you also don't know you hurt some people. Today, friends, we have two major things to do. We have to cultivate our lives, our soil, to cultivate it for the seed. But we have also to remember the people around us. Because in the process of the trampling that you're still crying about, people walk all over me, they despise me, they do this to me. In that process, you are doing the same to those around you. Wow. 
And then we are perpetuating this soil that is not going to bear fruit for Jesus. Will you kindly find time to sit with the people around you, the loved ones around you, and ask them whether they know that you love them? How many of us have teenagers in our homes? Do they know you love them? We have a lot of work we are going to cultivate in our lives. And then we are going to be so mindful and so intentional to the people around us. Are you expressing love to your loved ones in a way they understand? Because if you're not, then you're doing to them what happened to you? If I gave you the best car in the world and I spoke to you in Chinese, without a virus, but in Chinese, and you have no clue what I'm saying. Some of us love everyone around us so much, but we are loving them in a language they don't understand. And we have to go back and deal with that. Because without dealing with it, we are hardening that soil. Remember we are Christians. Hello? One of the reasons we are determined to give the best to our children, which is challenging, is because mommy and daddy met in engineering school. And so much has happened along the way from those days. But mommy and daddy are in full-time ministry. And in Africa, the minister takes care of the ministry not the other way around. So if we don't provide for our children better than we got, they are going to say it's because of Jesus. And they are going to resent. It's so important that we love the people around us in a way they understand because they are going to resent the Jesus and their soil is going to be hardened and we will have no harvest. So if our loved ones do not acknowledge that we love them, we are hardening that soil and we have a responsibility to go and find out if our loved ones actually acknowledge that we love them. And if they acknowledge otherwise, we begin on a journey first to explain and then to find out how we can love them in a way they understand. So that Christ in us is actually the hope of glory. Cultivate the soil, and it will produce a harvest. Hey, WayFam, thanks for tuning in. I pray that you receive the blessing from this message. And if you would like to support this ministry, click the link below. And until then, see you next time.